let me just introduce to you um, uh, Mr. Simon Pierre Adevolande, who um, is from the Republic of Benin, uh, which is in, in West Africa. And he, uh, he has a highest, uh, he graduated from the highest school of management in Lome in Benin, uh, where, and he also took a, a vocational training at Harvard University, the JFK School of, um, of Government in the United States. Um, his career um, spans, um, uh, through from, from the Americas to Africa, and he's looked at uh, a wide range uh, of development issues. Uh, he has about 27 years uh, and more actually with a lot of specialities there. Um, he has been working in Benin um, and in other areas particularly with the uh, United Nations system. He has worked for UNDP, for World Bank, uh, for the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, uh, for the Canadian Development Agency, uh, at least that's what it was called in uh, um, not too long ago before, they, uh, before they, 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 they made the transition. So he really does understand um, what it means uh, like to work also on the front line in, in, in his country. Um, uh, at the same time, he has been the chairman of the Alabama Benin Trade and Economic Forum he has been the director of the International Gospel and Roots Festival. Uh, so, you know, adding a, a different element um, to his experience there, a close relationship with the African diaspora worldwide um, and involvement um, uh, on the African continent as well. He has also served um, and contributed to the formulation process of, of, uh, of, of the compact. So the funding agreement that went for the Millennium uh, uh, Challenge Corporation, which as you would know, is, uh, is, is, um, is, is quite an important contribution, uh, particularly uh, for, for countries in the global south and also in Africa, in terms of how the United States Agency for International Development engages um, uh, with African uh, partner states. So I could go on and on and on, but here we are bringing him um, you know, particularly, and 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 I think this 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 part is is important. Before I end, that he used to be the presidential candidate for the March 2016 uh, president uh, presidential election in the Republic of Benin, and he was a member of the political coalition that was supporting the head of state in um, uh, uh, in Benin. And today, he is the ambassador of Benin to the People's Republic of China, with a vision which is in his era of in this era of globalization, he would like to turn Benin into a modern democracy based on participatory leadership, govern, uh, uh, govern differently Africa and a credible partner. So a mouthful, but I think um, quite important. Um, and I, I thought to, to read that out because, you know, looking at where, uh, where he's positioned as ambassador now, um, Benin uh, is an important trading partner to, um, to China and China is an important trading partner for Benin. Uh, and therefore we would like to understand for you, uh, from you ambassador, how do you sort of foresee the type of migrants uh, that um, that you that you represent, if we could put that, or that approach your services uh, uh, in the consular department? And at the same time, we want to understand, you know, thinking about, you know, when we heard about the breakout of um, of of um, the, the start of um, uh, uh, of the of the COVID um, virus in Wuhan, what was the situation like for some of the Benin st uh, students uh, that you had there? What was really happening? to other, um, uh, 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 my, uh, other migrants or rather citizens from Benin who were in China and in other places that you represent. So maybe we can kick you off from there and then we can um, push it along. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, good, good evening, good, uh, good morning, depending on where you are listening from. Thank you very much, Mrs. Paddy and all the organization to invite me for the, to this panel. You'll be here with me, uh, Benin is a French speaking country, and sometime in the evening, my English level is a little below, then you, you'll be here with me. Thank you very much. The, the, our discussion today is uh, very interesting. And the point of view of uh, the position of ambassador to provide services to the citizen, uh, our citizen in the country that we are covering. In the case of Benin, in China, we have three types of, of migrants. We have the students and the trainees who are the, the biggest number. And we have the permanent residents. And we have also those who are businessmen or women who come to trade in China uh, for a short period of time. Most of the time, the migrants don't contact the consular service until they have a challenge. They are in the, the countries, but uh, even sometimes they don't know even they have 
uh, consulate in the countries until they have the need of the service of consulate. And I will take the, the opportunity to share the experience that we faced during the, the, the COVID-19 breakout in last January. Starting in Wuhan, I have at that moment around 60 students in Wuhan. And personally, two weeks before the breakout, I was with them to, to celebrate the new year with them as, a, as I do usually, I, I have, I always spare time to, to meet them and to know more about their challenges and how we can bring support them. Particularly for Wuhan, I was there early in January before the breakdown. And I can see that the first challenge that we face is how to know how many people we have in the country. Because China is big in many provinces, is not everybody that uh, are registered at the consulate. Then that was the first challenge because the parents are calling from home to know exactly how the embassy will deal, support them. But at the same time, we don't know all of them. But lucky we, we used to work with the Federation of the Students. They have a, a federation of all the students who are living here. They are the one that uh, help us to update the, the database that we have. The same thing for the, the permanent resident, they have an association that I used to visit uh, often or from city to city. The third category, I don't have any information because they just come to, to, to the country and then do their business and stop by because there are no flight to go back. And we got a lot of support from the Chinese government through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to pass the information to those people because there was a, a panic everywhere. The students, the young people, and uh, we need to gather information from the ground and then share with the, our government to know how to bring more support to them. And Chinese government was very, very helpful to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but also through the provincial uh, Bureau of the Foreign Affairs that helped us to get in touch, in contact with our citizen to know their needs and see what the government of China can provide and what we as an embassy can provide to them additionally. For instance, the mask. The mask at the beginning, not like today, that you have masks everywhere, it's, it's really a, a rare uh, product. Then how to find association that will help us to, not only to collect at the embassy level, but how to dispatch those, uh, those masks to the people, how to give them uh, gloves and all those things. That was really a full-time work. The, the embassy leave all the other activities and focus only to assisting to the citizen. But also what I, I, I will um, emphasize on here is uh, the fact that we establish a, a close relationship with the government at home so that we can provide information to the parents because everybody wanted to know uh, how we can bring back home the, the students. But at that moment, when we analyze the situation, it's not the right decision to make, but how to explain that to the people, to the parents at home. That was a really challenging for us because they think that we are not doing anything for the, the students. That it, it was, uh, but I, I, I will admit here that it not come to my mind to ask, uh, uh, assistance from IOM because I haven't know that they can provide assistance to the, to the embassies to, to, in times of a challenge like that. But like you mentioned, we are not covering only China. From China, we, are, we have uh, India under our jurisdiction. We have Cambodia, Bangladesh, Korea, uh, Thailand. Then all the students of our citizens in those countries also are calling to, uh, to, to ask for uh, uh, assistant, but we put a, a network information in place, and that is where the social media is very, very important in our area to provide information uh, through the social media. We can send the information at the same time to everybody through the federation to so that they can get access to know and also to locate them to know what are their need and how we can assist them. Another thing that was helpful here is the African solidarity. In Beijing, we have a, a group of uh, African ambassadors 
who is well structured and we have a very good leadership uh, uh, on that uh, at that level then we were able to share information to build strategy together and also share ideas to see how we can work together to bring assistance to our citizen the student but also uh, the the resident the permanent resident that we we have then the african uh, ambassadors group was very very helpful to work together as a continent we have the uh, african union resident permanent the permanent resident uh, uh, ambassador here who are also inside the group then we work together as an African team to provide services to, to our people. Of course, the research is one of the, of the biggest challenge because uh, on normal time, uh, the resource is not enough, but in crisis, but the government, through our exchange of information, the government of Benin provide additional resources to face that challenge and to come to help the, our citizens who are in, in difficulties. And we use that opportunity of the resources that we got from the government to make all our citizens to register to get to have a consular card so that we update our database inside the embassy to know who are, who are the citizens that we have, where they are, in which provinces that allow us to prepare more assistance, to be more efficient, to provide a, our, our assistance to them. I think the, the challenge that we face is also those who finish their study and want to go back. Those who come just to do the business, the airport are closed and they come for the short period of time, they cannot stay in the hotel for more, more time to pay the bills. That was very challenging. But through the solidarity of those who are permanent residents, we are able to take some of them out from the hotels, they stay uh, with some some of our, our citizens to help them. And also we, we, we get some assistance from the government to take some of them back home. I think the, 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 the more important is the information. Because the migrant assistance to the migrant for me is the teamwork. It's the teamwork that involves not only the embassies and the consular service, but also the migrants and also both the government uh, in our capital and the government in the uh, host country. Then we need to put in place the service, the information services for those who are here, but also the parents at home, so that we can we can get at the, we can be at the same level of information. Finally, we have one type of uh, migrant that uh, we take in account at the same level to those days to our citizens who are for one reason or another find themselves in prisons they're in prison uh, for my embassy every year we take a tour at least once a year to go through all the prisons that we have our citizens to visit them physically to provide them assistance to provide them also encouragement and to support them morally. And even during the COVID time, we are not able to travel around, but we request from the administration of the prisons, the authorization to talk to each of them on phone. And we get that authorization and we, we call them to strengthen them and get give feedback to their parents at home for those who give the contact of their parents so that we let them know that they are safe. Then briefly, that is what I can I can bring to I can share with you in terms of practical assistance to the citizen abroad. The resource challenge is already there, but how do we use the small that we have to make a big impact? And uh, that I think the social media help us a lot to, to to attain all of them, at least to let them know that the ambassador here know that you are in the country, and anytime you have the challenge. Don't hesitate to contact us. This is what I can share with you briefly. And during the QR time, I will be available to answer your question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I think um, as you are reflecting, maybe we can come back to you on um, in the Q&A 
you can give us a bit of your reflection on, on how, I mean, you've talked about a group of migrants that is very hard to reach, which is migrants in prison. Um, and, um, you know, having been part of a, of, a, of a community myself when I lived in China, even when citizens wanted to reach out to those that we had heard of had been in pri imprisoned, it was not possible. And we knew that the only way you could do it is via your consul. You could not even send anything. You cannot send food. You basically cannot be able to communicate. So it's so comforting to hear that in this time of crisis, that there is that kind of support that goes to our brothers and sisters for one reason or another who have ended up in a situation that I am sure they would not have wanted to be in, uh, regardless of what has happened. So I think that this work of, of, of visiting people in prisons is, remains critically important. And that maybe we can also hear from other ambassadors who've joined us and the consular services who've joined, uh, who've joined us here in the panel about how they're dealing with this um, hard to reach group of migrants, if we could call them, uh, in a way because they are, you know, they are neither in your control nor are they in the control of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who would be your natural interlocutor. And there they would probably be with the state security and that sometimes becomes very difficult. So maybe we can hear a little bit from you how you manage to navigate that system. And if you could add to that group, uh, because Ambassador, you've already explained to us about prisoners, but how to deal with undocumented migrants. So this group of, you know, in some countries, they say they are illegal. Uh, in migration terms, we try to say that the person cannot be legal. I may not have a right of residence or a right to be in a, in a, in a particular jurisdiction for a particular country, but I'm irregularly in that sense. So these irregular migrants who um, uh, are there because they've overstayed or they took the wrong visa or for one reason or another, they've just found themselves not to be on the good side of that local law. How are we really helping them? Because it's still part of the migration journey. So maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that in terms of maybe support um, that, you are, that you are getting from or that you're looking at in terms of returning migrants or facilitating them, but working together with the local government. Uh, you, you explained about your, your relationship with the Provincial Bureau of, of Foreign Affairs. That's very exemplary to hear that in crisis, they were also able to come up for you and help. Uh, I think it's also very good and commendable to hear about the work that um, the, the, the Federation of us, uh, the Federation of Students comes in, and also the diaspora community that really comes in to push these efforts uh, so that we can, we, can, we can sort of block the seal where we have limited resources. So we can come back to you and to also other ambassadors to talk about undocumented migrants when we come to the Q&A session. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador.